Mixing with Mike plugin of the week is Audified Mix Checker Pro. Mix Checker Pro is an updated uh, plugin from Mix Checker, which you may already have. Uh, the basic or fundamental idea of the plugin is to emulate um, what your mix would sound like when going through other sources, commercial uh, consumer level sources. Um, it also does uh, studio monitors, um, computer speakers, uh, laptop or tablet speakers, um, earbuds and headphones, cars, radios, etc. So um, you could see there's a whole bunch of things here. Now there's a bunch of, there are a few changes that have been made to it. One, uh, you can increase the size of the graphic user interface, which is cool. Uh, there's a little wrench here for finding the manual, setting the calibration, checking for updates, all that sort of fun stuff. You could also load and store presets. This is very cool because you can find uh, the things that you like to go to. They also have some categories here that go for mastering, um, home devices, etc., etc., for checking the low end on your mix, okay, that type of thing. So you can uh, load and store presence. Uh, there's an edit feature here that allows you to take any of the characteristics of each of the things. So for example here, you could see sort of an NS10 uh, style uh, speaker here. I can make this button um, look like anything you know so let's just say that i go to studio monitors here it'll give me some variations of studio monitors so what i have here for example is a studio cube right which is just those like uh, emulation of the oratone speakers now this this features that are added on to this which i'll, I'll, I'll kind of want to go over and then as i show you because this is quite cool when you actually can take this you can move any of these buttons around to be in any sequence that you want so what i've done here is i've stored a basic setup um so let me just cancel out of this for a second so if i um go here i could go and this will show uh different mastering setups uh this will go through home devices uh on the go which would give you um oh i'm surprised it doesn't have car stuff but it has all of the um uh, cell phones and all that sort of stuff, the solid low end, which gets more into PA and sub speaker systems and stuff like that. And then I have my own basic setup, which I've stored here. Now, there are, are some additional features that are added onto here, but one thing is cool. So for example, here, I have a studio cube. Uh, when I go to the, to the uh, menu down here, I can actually set where I want this, how stereo that I want this to be. So one thing, for example, when you're listening through a device, if you have like a normal set of studio monitors, and uh, let me take a step back here. So if I have my like a normal uh, studio monitor here, uh, when I open this up, I'm going to set my panning to be full, 100%. So it'll show up just in the same exact positioning here that I have. Um, however, if I go back, for example, and uh, I listen to something, you know, like a phone or a laptop, Right. When I go here, the panning base is not going to be as wide. In fact, I might want to make this narrower, almost mono, because that's the way that that's going to come in. So when I started putting together my personal setup here, I got a pair of studio monitors. I have the mix cubes, but I make them mono. So essentially it monos up the mix and just puts them right in the middle of the speakers. Um, and uh, and then a different you know uh, computer uh, speaker setup, two different laptop setups, tablet setup, and with each of these you have options. Okay, so uh, when I go through the settings here, um, not only do I have you know I have like in this case you know three different phones, um, I have you know uh, all these different uh, studio speaker configurations I added them up it's something like in the mid 60s 65 66 of them different club pa systems computer audio systems uh, different size televisions laptops phones tablets uh, in-ear monitors uh, on-ear monitors which are, are over the top that don't go in the ear canal I can zoom in a little bit uh, different cars including minivans uh, or sedans, uh, different radio uh, speaker systems, and some basic hi-fi stuff. So it obviously doesn't give you a specific models, but it gives you a lot of information about um, uh, a lot of choices to pick from. You can give it custom labels if you want to. You could set uh, a different level for each preference, so you could sort of balance them out. And then you also notice here is there's a, a distortion level, and that kind of goes to the other part of the setup here. So it well, if I do a basic setup, I can save it or I can save as, 
call it a, uh, whatever I want to, and that way when I load up the plugin, I can just open that up and load it up. Okay, so moving on from there, um, some of the other additional features here are added noise. Uh, I can auto toggle between the different settings. Uh, I have a bypass button, which will bypass everything. Uh, there's a distortion on it. So, uh, it will give the um, inherent distortion in each of these individual devices. They will all distort the sound, especially like tablets and uh, speakers on, on iPhones or, or um, uh, smartphones, whatever you want to call it, uh, computers, etc. There'll be some form of distortion. And so you can uh, do that there. You can mono everything up. Uh, there are different mono modes. You can listen to just the left, just the right. You could swap the left and right. Uh, so when you hit the mono button, you could do a variety of different options that way. Um, and uh, and you got the bypass switch. The auto will will uh, toggle through based on the amount of time here. And then you can add in noise. Now the noise gives you um, like a background noise. So say that you were listening on earbuds, uh, there would be some existing noise, which might be street noise, for example. And then it could set the level of that noise. So I can hear my mix with background noise. Now, so where this becomes important is that um, in checking a mix and the way that you use a plugin like this with all these different settings, it's not to make sure that your mix is perfect because balances with different frequency responses and different systems are going to change. So the vocal may come across a little bit louder in this mix or whatever um, than, you know, uh, uh, with different um, setups than in other things. The vocals may come through more, the snare may cut through more, you may lose the bass. What you're trying to do is you're trying to find a balance where by a no speaker system or thing that you toggle through, does your mix sort of collapse or fall apart? Okay, that becomes the the uh, the important element here, um, and so that uh, you shouldn't even on smaller speaker systems lose the bass. And what that means is maybe you have to add frequencies in on the bass that allow the note to cut through. Uh, whether you do that through harmonic distortion or whether you just do it with EQ. Um, and that way you can use this as a way to check what will happen to your mix as it goes through uh, different setups. This is obviously also great for mastering, but the way that this translates helps you to address uh, problem areas, things that might come along the way. So let's listen. We'll start bypassed. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to uh, set up uh, the mix here. Hold on one second. I just realized there's something that I added last minute in on the mix that may take it out of balance with the vocals. So I'm going to take that out. Okay, so let's listen to just the raw mix as it is uh, with this uh, plug-in bypassed and then we'll switch between some of the different systems. So you can see here as I toggle through the different options, you also get different um, uh, stereo widths, and these are based on settings that come through. So obviously headphones will be completely wide because you were putting them on. Now, um, what happens here, like one thing I hear right away is that the bass isn't quite right. I'm not going to get into a whole mixing seminar and how, about how to make that right, but just to show that it can expose problems like that or that maybe if you're concerned that the vocals are too sibilant and you start listening through different devices, you may realize like, wow, it really, really super cuts through on this particular device. Um, and then uh, when you get to stuff later on in the mix, 
you know, and you add in external noise, then you could see how much your mix cuts above noise level. You know, part of the whole loudness processing thing um, is that uh, the levels or balances between the instruments are close enough together or much closer together overall. So what you lose in sort of this depth, um, you know, the basic depth field and, and perception of dynamic overall, um, what happens is in loud environments, loud listening environments, the mix holds itself together. It holds its integrity. So when you listen to it in a car or out on the street uh, with earbuds on, I know it's dangerous, but if you're doing that sort of thing and you're listening, then you want the mix to be able to cut through where you're not just like cranking up the headphones to the point where you start to really hurt yourself. Um, and you, so this will expose certain things that might disappear in the mix. So if, let's say, for example, we have earbuds and we have some street noise. I can get a sense of whether the mix is going to cut through well enough. And there's everything from, uh, you know, parks, two different streets, a playground. Um, so you got kids there, station, subway. It's a very quiet bar. In a bus, in a car. Right, so things like that, like that road rumble, and if we put it in our car setup here. You, you can kind of see more or less whether any of those types of elements kind of um, um, mess up things that are going on. Now this actually, you might think like this is a silly tool. This is actually a really powerful one because it's one of the things that I always listen for um, when I'm auditioning my mixes. If I go out in my car, I'll put it on and I'll just check it out and listen to it and see what happens as I'm just driving around. Um, and in checking those mixes, I may think, you know, wow, I'm really losing the roads part or some other element of the mix. And uh, having this as a tool helps to kind of bleed that type of stuff out. Um, and that helps you to set balances uh, to define the processing. Uh, this is particularly important when you get onto the mastering level as you apply your mastering processing and you get, this is just on a mix that's not finished. Um, but it becomes a valuable tool, particularly later on towards the end of the mix as you're doing all of your automation and, and the mastering just to see how this may translate. Now, of course, nothing is perfect here because all of these um, uh, setups here uh, which is different from the previous version, which used impulse responses. So this is much more uh, phase linear uh, to the original. So they did a much better job of sampling all the different elements. Obviously, it's relative to the way that you're monitoring through them. Um, so in other words, if you're listening through your speakers and you have uh, these basic setups, the actual frequency response may vary based, you know, system to system. But, uh, and you can make some compensations for that. That's where uh, the edit mode and working in some of the other uh, basic things that you might have in here or going through some of the different presets, you know, may be able to help you adjust or compensate for that. So nothing is exactly perfect, but it does give you at least an idea or something that's representative of closely uh, more like what uh, monitoring through one of those other systems might sound like. So obviously it's ideal to have a nice flat sounding system. So when you bring in something like this, it gives you um, a better, you know, more accurate measure of what's going on. Either that or your option is just to just have, you know, 60 devices lingering around in four cars that you can uh, play all of your audio through to check and see if it works. Very cool plugin. Nice update. Uh, I really dig um, uh, a lot of the stuff that Audified does. And uh, this is a, a very welcome update. I've used the uh, Mix Checker, and when I saw the Mix Checker Pro, I was on it right away. So, uh, very cool one. Uh, and that is why it is uh, the plugin of the week, Mixing with Mike, Audified Mix Checker Pro.